Tesla battery day just concluded and I know some people are a little disappointed but I am not. So I'm going to tell you how it went and about the three big announcements that were made during the battery day and we're going to do it right now. Welcome to e for electric your number one source of electric car scoop. So let's talk about the battery day. It was delayed by about half a year though it ended up looking kind of like if it was done originally in March. It was done a drive-in movie theater type of a style so everybody could social distance and everybody was in their Teslas though. I didn't notice any Model S or Model X cars in the audience was mainly Model Y and some Model 3 so that was a little weird but nevertheless kind of cool and also press wasn't really invited but one of our contributors Eli Burton of my Tesla adventure was there in the first row so he was able to report what it was like being there hey guys Eli here of my Tesla adventure and I am at the Tesla battery shareholder day and this is the most unconventional Tesla event I have ever attended it is literally set up like a drive-in movie theater of Tesla's in a parking lot. There's a stage right here with the Cybertruck and Roadster Elon's gonna present. Let me just turn around the camera and show you guys because like, this is crazy. Here we go, Cybertruck Roadster Semi. As you could see, all of the toys were there, the Cybertruck, the Cyberquad, the Semi-Truck and the Roadster looking beautiful right next to the stage. And because everybody was in their cars, instead of the applause, everybody would just kind of honk all at once. And it was kind of cool. It sounded like this. Thank you. Now, first, there was an annual shareholder meeting during which Elon kind of gave an update of where Tesla is right now. But there was nothing new in that particular part of the presentation. But once the battery day started, it was kind of a long two hour class on a lot of battery science and manufacturing stuff that I think a lot of people kind of got bored with. Uh, I felt a little bit like, you know, Saturday traffic school for those of you guys who still remember that. But if you do geek out on that kind of stuff, then this was quite entertaining with some major, major breakthroughs. So let's get to the top three biggest announcements with the top announcement being something that only got, I don't know, about 30 seconds of the entire presentation, but I thought was absolutely epic. So we'll go in the order of least important to the most important, though I got to tell you, I'm not even sure if I can pick one. So maybe you guys can do that in the comment section of this video. Before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex the Tesla community accessory store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. And by Candy America, the most affordable electric car in the United States, K27, for under $10,000 after the federal tax incentives and their second model, K23, for under 20. Deliveries start pretty soon, so don't forget to reserve one for yourself. The link is in the description of this video. All right, so let's talk about the three biggest announcements. And of course, the first one is the new battery tech. As everybody reported pretty much by now, Tesla is creating their own battery that they will produce in-house. It is a much bigger battery cell that contains way more energy and costs way less to produce. It has a tablet design and they went to, to a very, very long and detailed explanation on why that is and why it's going to cost so much less to produce specifically because you don't have to go through a part of a process that takes the biggest amount of space in a factory and the longest in terms of time to go through. So therefore you can have a much smaller factory that produces essentially the same as a few bigger factories. One of the more interesting parts was about the structural battery as Elon called it. Essentially, this is where the car won't really have a battery pack. It will actually have the batteries integrated into the body of the car. And that alone will bring the weight of the car down by about 10% and therefore increase the range by about 14%. And at the end of the day, all of the new battery cell tech and the way it's integrated into the structure of the car will increase the range altogether by about 54%. 
So therefore, if we take the 402 mile range of the current Tesla Model S, we can expect about a 610 mile range once this technology is implemented. Now, this is not a 1000 mile range on one charge battery that I was hoping for and predicting in my video a couple of days ago, but this is a substantial progress. However, and this is why some people are disappointed, Elon mentioned that this technology is about three years away from actually implementing it into the Tesla cars. Now, we should mention that all of the money that Tesla is going to be saving using this new technology is not exactly going to be going into the pockets of the consumers. Elon was pretty clear that Tesla needs to make bigger profit and he's right right now they're making about one percent of profits and obviously investors are not going to be happy with it in the next few years so a lot of the benefits of this new technology is not exactly going to be for the future tesla drivers but mainly for its investors but let's get to the second biggest announcement of the evening and that's where this technology is going to benefit the consumers and that is the twenty-five thousand dollar Tesla model which has no name right now but Elon mentioned that they're working on it and it should come to the market in about three years all right so obviously that's good news but I'm wondering about a couple of things obviously Elon has unveiled cheaper models before it happened with the model 3 and model y which essentially never made it to market even the $35,000 version of model 3 was on the market only for a few months until the price went up and the cheapest version of the model y at this point is off the table altogether but i'm also wondering why wait three years i think tesla is more than capable of making a twenty-five thousand dollar model if not right now then within the next year and bear with me for just a second if you create a two-door not four-door but two-door hatchback which is much smaller and put a much smaller battery pack say for 200 miles at least as the basic model and then of course take away all the self-driving toys i think that car can achieve twenty-five thousand dollar price tag uh, without jeopardizing profits let me know if you agree in the comment section but meanwhile let me get to what i think is the biggest news even though it didn't seem like elon thought so they only spent i don't know a couple of minutes on that and a lot of the specs weren't even talked about we just saw them on the screen also as i'm looking at some of the articles that already came out about the battery day not many people mentioning this as a big deal but i think it is and i'm talking about the unveiling of the specs not the car itself because it's going to look pretty much the same of the tesla model s plaid mode these are insane zero to 60 under two seconds quarter mile under nine seconds 200 miles per hour top speed and uh 520 plus miles of range uh i think this is awesome and amazing and yet nobody almost noticed in the price tag is not going to be as high as it could be at one hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars now the bad news is that the production will be pushed by at least a year so you can expect these in production by the end of the next year now of course the big question going into the battery day was would tesla be able to beat all of these new specs that set the record by the lucid air prototype and it looks like the answer is yes they would obviously it looks like the car is going to be going in production a little bit later than lucid air but at this point i absolutely love this competition finally a real competition not just between these two brands tesla and lucid but also this sets the standard for the rest of the industry and this is what we want of course we shouldn't expect lucid just to sit on their hands i'm sure they will make some improvements and announcements at some point later for example we know that there will be a performance version of the lucid air i have seen it go quarter of a mile against the model s ludicrous plus in the porsche taycan we'll probably find out that number in a while so we'll see this competition is is really quite exciting and once again you know who wins here not tesla or lucid us the electric car consumers and that's what it's all about now this is not the end of this conversation because in a couple of days i'll have sandy monroe right here as my guest discussing what we both saw during the battery day so make sure to stay tuned for that hit that 
subscribe button and also the bell notification icon so you don't miss this and don't forget tomorrow the volkswagen id4 a pretty decent competitor to the tesla model y and trust me i've seen it in person about a week ago is going to be unveiled i will also have the ceo of volkswagen group of america here to answer some tough questions so stay tuned for that but for now check out my interview with henrik fisker where he tells me why the amazing concept cars don't look as amazing when they go in production a pretty informative video as well uh, click on that link in the top corner if you're watching me on youtube but i also put it in the description of this video all right looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged